What's good, everybody? Welcome to The Rap Studios. My name is Umberto Gonzalez. I'm The Rap's resident fanboy, and I'm joined by my colleague and non-fangirl, film reporter Beatrice Verhoeven. We're here to discuss New Line's Shazam, which stars Zachary Levi yeah. as the superhero. I seen it, you seen it, what do you think? You know, I did tweet when I saw the movie that I loved it. It starts off really slow, and for some reason that riled people up. I don't know why, that's like the worst thing I've ever said. Yeah, it has a slow start for the first 20 minutes. It goes very deep into the backstory of a character, and it was very slow, you agree? Yes. Um, but then, you know, the movie kind of makes up for it. The rest of it is just very fast paced, very entertaining. Um, there's so many twists and turns that you actually don't see coming. I mean, I don't read the comics, so I have no idea what's going on, but I, there was no part of it where I was like, oh, you know, they set that up or, oh, I saw that coming, which was great. Um, do you agree? Uh, yeah, the movie basically started up a tad slow. I was a little worried at first because they spent a little too much time setting up the villain, Dr. Savannah which we broke, uh, and, but it's, it's, it, once the movie gets going, it's literally big, meets the Goonies, meets the Incredibles. I had a blast. Mm -hmm. Dr. Savannah, played by uh, Mark Strong, is a, is a worthy villain. Um, the movie is very lighthearted in tone, yeah. much different than what you've seen from it's DC before. Exactly, and it's okay. literally like, if you imagine yourself as like a kid wanting to be a superhero, that's what Zachary is. Like he is the perfect version of the kid we were that wanted to be a superhero. And like, I don't think, I can't imagine anyone who could have played the role better. Just, you know, playing a kid at heart is yeah. perfect for him. And he said that himself. He like, oh, no, loves absolutely. going back and pretending to be a kid's mind in a grown man's body, which is awesome. No, I'm happy for him. He's a great guy. I've been seeing him at Comic-Con now for over a decade. He's like a legit, fanboy mm -hmm. of the highest order. He used to throw fanboy parties with his nerd headquarters. Uh, very geeky guy. And he literally is the embodiment of a big kid who morphs into this superhero. Like, it's wish fulfillment. What if you were 15, 16 years old and then get to be the adult version of yourself like 20 years later and be a superhero? That's what this movie is. Yeah. So, like, halfway through the first and the second act, there's a lot of that wish fulfillment going on. Like, little things like they, you know, they do YouTube videos or something, or they do feats of strength or feats of superhero things, and it's hilarious. Angel Asher, who plays the young Billy Batson, is great He's in great. the role. His wingman and bestie, uh, Freddy, played by Jack Dylan Grazer, who you've seen in It, he, I think, steals the movie with his humor. He's yeah. hilarious. Hilarious. It's very similar to w what he played in It, which was interesting. Yeah, he's becoming that go-to guy, the wise-ass kid that, yeah. you know, that talks a lot. For me, the breakout was um, the young girl, Darla. Yes, she the sister. the most amazing character. She's the cutest. Like, literally throughout the entire movie, whenever she said anything, people all in the audience were like, Oh, oh my God, she's adorable. And she's just like your cute little wise ass little sister who just wants you to be her friend. And I, she was my favorite. I want to be her friend. Shazam, even as a fanboy, Shazam was considered an obscure character, even for my taste. But Jeff Johns deserves a lot of credit because he rebooted the character recently and a lot of the movie lifts from his material. Mm -hmm. uh, if you watch the DC animated movies like I do, there was a, a short film where Black Adam uh, goes at it with Shazam and then Superman gets involved as well. But uh, if you don't know anything about the character, like I did previously, I'll admit, Jeff Johns' trade paperback about Shazam during the New 52 reboot is required reading because it's literally the movie is literally that almost basically we we see i mean you see it in the promotional materials billy batson's an orphan he then joins an orphanage and then he meets these other kids as well freddie's amongst one of them um the mom of the orphanage is amazing too. yes I'll just i forgot the name of the actress but uh she's great the step the step parents are great but also the camaraderie that they have and it pays off later no spoilers but trust me it, it, i didn't even see it coming and no. i was like genuinely surprised the in the best. third act um, I do want to talk about that it was a lot scarier than I thought it would be, and that's because of the director, David F. Sandberg, who yes. you know has done um, Annabelle movies, um, so he has that horror expertise, which I'm happy he brought to the movie. Yes. Um, and I've seen a lot of people talking about it. It's a lot scarier than you would think. 
Um, yes, because of the villains in the role, the villains. which There's we won't say who. Times where I was like, Oof. yeah, no, it could be it, if you have if you're a parent. I'm not a parent, but if you're a parent with minor children, it could be maybe a tad scary for them. Also. This is the first, I think, DC movie where there's not one, and s but two post-credit sequences. Please be sure to stay, stay after the credits roll so you can see the mid-credit sequence and then the second one, which is hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. The special effects were great. Yeah, I do have to say, um, even you know the the scary aspect that I mentioned before, they could have really, they could, they maybe could have messed it up, but it actually was really good. Um, and once again, I think I credit David with that because yes. he knows what he's doing in that sense. Like I was a fan of his first short film that ended up becoming Lights Out. Like he's very good with very little. So they got themselves yeah. a filmmaker, like a, a, real, a guerrilla filmmaker, quite frankly, who now stepped into, he got his, he made his chops at New Line with his horror films, Lights Out, and like you said, I think Annabelle, and then he graduated to the superhero movie stage. The movie only costs a hundred. And it's it's clearly all on the screen, mm -hmm. so the tracking is decent. It came out yes uh, yesterday, I think the tracking came out. So uh, there's a screening going on with Fandango coming up as well. Yep. But I, and fans could, gonna could check that out. I'm seeing the movie at least two three other times. I enjoyed it. You? Yeah, it was very entertaining. I laughed a lot, and I think yes. that everyone will be pleasantly surprised. DC's obviously going a different direction, exploring all sorts of tones. Like this, Shazam is lighthearted in tone. Joker, which will come out next year, will be obviously v very dark in tone. Yeah. So looking forward to that. It'll be interesting to see where they where they go from now on. I think. Yeah, no, they, they're exploring they're exploring different different tones for their movies, just like Marvel does, quite frankly. And uh, we're seeing all types of characters. They're be, they're they're exploring their rich tapestry of characters and seeing which yeah. ones make the most sense. That's why they're developing a lot more. But I'm I'm confident of the team. That, and we've done reporting of the team currently in place. Walter Hamada mm -hmm. uh, and his two ex and his two lieutenants are doing quite, I think, a good job working with filmmakers, finding the right talent in front and behind the camera to service these characters. You know, I'm curious because people have asked me about this on Twitter: Captain Marvel or Shazam? <sighs> That's a tough one. I'm going to be brutally honest. I love both, and you can love both, okay? But I got to give the edge a little bit to Shazam. Okay. Just, just a little. It was just, I enjoy both. And of course, I enjoy Goose the Cat like everybody else. But Shazam kind of, I mean, I'm a DC guy anyway, so I might be a little biased. But uh, I, I enjoyed Shazam a tad more. Please don't kill me for that. You? You know what? I'm actually not going to say anything because if I say anything, I'm going to have a feminist agenda. You know who you are, whoever said that to me. Um, <laughs> so I'm not even going to go into that. They're vastly different movies. Not even Marvel, DC, woman men, it's vastly different, and it has different messages and different intentions and different tones. So just go see both, and yeah. then make up your mind, and don't tell me I have an agenda. No, I mean, <laughs> it's a beautiful time, at least for me to be a fanboy, because we're getting all sorts of- And then we have Endgame coming up. We got Endgame coming up, the Shazam, Hellboy's coming out. There's a bunch of superhero movies, whether they work or not, it's up to, to the audiences, but it's a wonderful time. And once again, you could like both. I see both, I see all Marvel movies multiple times. I see all DC movies multiple mm -hmm. times. Really excited for DC. In, in sports terms, there's like two New York sports teams, the New York Giants and the New York Jets. The New York Giants, okay, won four Super Bowls. The New York Jets are like that team you want to root for, that got, they get you hard, you want to see them be as good as the Giants. So I know I'm going off on a tangent real quick, but that's like Marvel and DC. Marvel is like the Super Bowl champ, four time rings, Super Bowl rings, wow. DC are like the Jets and the, you know, you're rooting for them wow, and they're gonna get totally there. Wow, you totally lost me. Hilarious. Where could, uh, where could good people find your work? On therap.com or you can follow me on Twitter at Beaverhope. And you can follow my work at therap.com, heroichollywood.com and at elmayimbe on Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Until the next movie, we're out. Boom.